Welcome to the Liquid Nitrogen Safety Employee Training, Safe Operations, Handling, and Storage. Throughout this training we will talk about, what is liquid nitrogen? What are its hazards? What are the required personal protective equipments? We will also cover the required storage container types, safe handling procedures, the storage and ventilation guidelines, and we will also go over emergency response procedures. Liquid nitrogen is nitrogen gas in a liquid state at extremely low temperatures. Specifically, below minus 195.8 degrees Celsius. When in the gaseous phase, it is a mostly inert gas that is colorless, odorless, and tasteless. Due to its extremely low boiling point, it is essential to handle liquid nitrogen with extreme care to avoid injuries like frostbite. Liquid nitrogen has an expansion ratio of approximately 1 to 696. This means that it is capable of rapid expansion, which can be hazardous if not properly managed. The gas isn't technically toxic, but it can easily start to replace oxygen in the air so your body can't breathe in enough oxygen. This can cause asphyxiation very quickly. Oxygen becomes a liquid at a higher temperature than nitrogen, so liquid oxygen can become encased in liquid nitrogen. These oxygen-enriched environments can cause materials to burn rapidly. It's very, very cold. Since it's so cold, any exposure to your skin can cause severe and painful frostbite. So, how can you protect yourself? The use of lab coats or jackets can save your body parts from freezing during an accidental spill. Also, safety goggles or glasses are required, but a full face shield is recommended. Gloves are also required, preferably cryogenic, but leather or insulated gloves will work for smaller scale applications. Long pants and close-toed shoes are also always required. Now, let's talk about the types of containers. There are three types of containers, Dewar, cryogenic liquid cylinder, and cryogenic storage tank storage varies from a few liters to thousands. Vaporization is always continuous. This is because heat leaks are always present. You must know your specific container and proper handling procedures, so let's dive into the details. Let's start with the cryogenic container. These are insulated, vacuum jacketed, pressure vessels. They operate up to 350 PSI and have capacities between 80 to 450 L. The product may be withdrawn as a gas by passing through an internal vaporizer or as a liquid under its own vapor pressure. They come equipped with safety relief valves and rupture discs. This protects from pressure buildup. Now, the second type of container is the doer. This is a non-pressurized container and its typical capacity is a liter. With this type of container, the product may be removed to smaller containers by pouring, but larger sizes require a transfer tube. A loose-fitting dust cap over the outlet prevents moisture from plugging the vent, allowing gas to escape. And finally, the third type of container is the cryogenic storage tank. They typically include a tank, a vaporizer, and a pressure control manifold. They may be spherical or cylindrical in shape, and the sizes range from 500 to 420,000 gallons. They are also powder and vacuum insulated. Let's talk about transfer lines. Transfer lines are used to remove liquid from the doer or cryogenic liquid storage containers. Cryogenic lines are always connected to the cylinder's liquid withdrawal valve. A typical doer transfer line is connected to a bayonet. This provides a means to remove product by pressure buildup. Use only transfer lines designed for cryogenic equipment. When transporting liquid nitrogen tanks, find a cart, don't try to carry or roll the container. Keep upright, don't try to pull the container, always push. Avoid mechanical or thermal shock, sudden environmental change could potentially change the pressure. When handling liquid nitrogen, always use cryogenic insulated gloves to operate any valve or any place of a possible air leak. Leather gloves can also be used, 
but for larger scale operations use cryogenic. Be aware of the weight and design of your specific container. The figure on the right is a diagram of a liquid nitrogen storage tank. For gas withdrawal, connect a control regulator to the gas withdrawal valve and the outlet of the valve to the system receiving gas. Open withdrawal and pressure building valves until the container reaches the desired pressure. You may now begin withdrawing gas. For liquid withdrawal, first, always wear a face mask. Then, connect a transfer line from the liquid valve to the system being filled. Proceed to open the valve to desired rate of flow and close when finished. To prevent back contamination, all valves should be closed when the container has been emptied. Now, let's review some storage and ventilation precautions. Liquid nitrogen must be kept in a well-ventilated room. The room shouldn't be a confined area to help exhaust any nitrogen gas, off-gassing from the container. A non-ventilated room could very quickly become oxygen deficient. The building that the nitrogen is stored in must have an exhaust ventilation system to the outside of the building. All lab buildings have this system. Do not leave Dewar containers uncovered, but make sure to have an exhaust system. If the container is completely covered, the pressure could increase to dangerous levels, so exhaust is required. If left completely uncovered, the liquid nitrogen will evaporate much faster. Store in a controlled environment, this means it must be stored away from weather change, which will help the nitrogen from undergoing drastic changes in temperature or pressure. Now that you have learned what liquid nitrogen is, and understand the ins and outs of handling it and storing it, you must learn what measures you should take in the event of an emergency. First, if your skin encounters liquid nitrogen, thaw slowly with warm water and seek medical attention through 911. If you experience lack of oxygen, move immediately to a well-ventilated area or outside and acquire a respirator. Reentry may only occur by trained personnel with air supplying respirators. If an emergency happens, contact 911 then your nearest first responder or management. If there is a fire, call 911. This is due to the possible asphyxiation hazard. You have now officially completed the Nitrogen Employee Safety Training. Thank you for your attention.